1910-1919, The Introduction of Hollywood. As indicated by Hollywood Fantasy, the main movie made there was Cecil B. DeMille's The Score Man in 1914, after the chief chose not to land in a snowbound Flagstaff, Arizona, however to continue to Los Angeles. Indeed, four years sooner the productive D.W. Griffith had come west to exploit the California daylight, and the 17-minute in Old California, an undertaking set in Spanish pilgrim days, was the first to be recorded in quite a while total in the town of Hollywood. Presently remembered by a landmark at 1713 Vine Street, it was delivered on 10 March 1910, one of Griffith's 98 movies of that year. Inside six years Griffith had coordinated the initial two transcending works of art of American film, The Birth of a Nation, 1915, and Intolerance, 1916, and Charlie Chaplin's two real comedies had made his vagrant persona world acclaimed. By 1919 the pair had joined stars Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford to frame their own organization, United Artists, inciting the comment, the insane people have assumed responsibility for the shelter. By at that point, Hollywood had gotten inseparable from American film and its thriving allure. That year Griffith left California to work in New York. When he got back toward the West Coast ten years after the fact, he found the spot changed and himself a Victorian chronological era. French's best film of the decade. Bigotry, D.W. Griffith, 1916. Splendidly intertwining four accounts of social mistreatment, from old Babylon to the present, intolerance is epic in scale and aspiration. Griffith assisted with making the language of film, and with the harmful birth of a nation and the eminent intolerance he took the American film from cavern painting to quattrocento, finding and outperforming Europe's true-to-life accomplishment. 1920-1929, The Approach of Sound. After the main world-encompassing war, a business made piecemeal by semi-proficient outsiders, the vast majority of them Jewish, was formed into an industry overwhelmed by a small bunch of studios that made movies, yet additionally appropriated and displayed them, and had set up workplaces around the world. The film province acquired a standing for gluttonous ways of life and prominent utilization, and dangers of exacting restriction from rigid associations, a large number of them bigoted, were kept under control by the arrangement of Presbyterian senior Will Hayes as top of the new motion picture producers and distributors of America, referred to casually as the business czar. A portion of Europe's most prominent abilities were tricked to Hollywood, while quiet film was refined into another craftsmanship in the comedies of Chaplin, Keaton and Lloyd and the mental shows of Eric von Stroheim and King Vador. To aggrandize the business and fight off unionization, Louis B. Mayer established the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and its Oscars. At that point Hollywood was hit by two quakes. The initially was the inadvertent presentation of discourse by Warner Brothers in The Jazz Singer, 1927, inside two years quiet motion pictures were allocated to chronicles and craftsmanship houses, and the business confronted huge bills for soundproofing studios and re-preparing films. The second was the Wall Street crash of 1929 that undermined liquidation and gave control of the studios to the financiers. French's best film of the decade. The Gold Rush, Charles Chaplin, 1925. Chaplin was the most well-known man on earth when his vagrant, a balletic wisecracker appreciated similarly by Nijinsky and Einstein, looked for his fortune in the Yukon in this, his first full-length parody. This in fact basic, unendingly creative film adjusted chuckling and emotion, its restlessness arrangement is incredible. Chaplin was the just movie maker sufficiently incredible to challenge the happening to sound. 1930 to 1939, the time of Technicolor. Hollywood's most noteworthy decade started with the promoting motto, Garbo Talks. Sound pictures carried a surge of new scholars to Tinseltown, going from joking newspapermen to William Faulkner. Another bluntness in plots and exchange prompted the authorization in 1934 of the Hayes Office Production Code, starting a clash of brains among blue pencils and producers that kept going 30 years. The Depression was faced through twofold bills and less expensive tickets, and reacted to by idealism and sharp friendly analysis. The New Deal enraptured the business strategically, 
the investors moving to one side, the entertainers, authors and chiefs to one side. In 1934 the business chiefs joined to overcome the communist Upton Sinclair when he ran for legislative head of California. The studios created diverse visual and sensational styles, gothic awfulness at Universal, social still, small voice and wrongdoing at Warner, glamour at MGM, which gloated, a greater number of stars than there are in the sky, Mae West, the Marx Brothers and Dietrich at Paramount, Capra at Columbia, Astaire, Rogers and Art Deco at RKO. Classes were systematized. Disney moved from program-filling shorts to the full-length Snow White. The decade crested in 1939 when Technicolor made its mark. This was the best year in Hollywood's set of experiences, with Stagecoach, The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind among its pinnacles. French's best film of the decade. The Wizard of Oz, Victor Fleming, 1939. The account of Dorothy, the Midwestern homestead young lady cleared away to the place where there is Oz, was a set-up public most loved when the aptitude of MGM changed it into a mysterious melodic that moved from the dust bowl of the depression years to a technicolor future. Its melodies became enduring top picks, and Judy Garland was changed into a star and afterward a symbol. 1940-1949, the motion pictures do battle. The Hollywood tale, accepting the business as an allegory for free enterprise or America itself, turned out to be immovably settled in 1941, with Bud Schulberg's What Makes Sammy Run. Also, F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Last Tycoon. That year Hollywood retooled for war. Stars, chiefs and experts joined the military. Those remaining behind sold war bonds and showed up in disseminator amusements. Two new sorts showed up the enthusiastic war film vilifying Japs and Germans, and the dull thrill ride, later named the film noir, much affected by splendid outcasts from Nazi Germany knowledgeable in expressionism. Hollywood delighted in enormous public endorsement and huge film industry returns, in spite of the deficiency of key unfamiliar business sectors. At that point came Harmony and the Virus War. The outside adversary was assaulted in enemy of socialist pictures like The Iron Curtain, 1948. Yet, an interior foe as against socialist witch hunters, most broadly the House Committee on Un-American Activities, HUAC, met with cowardly accommodation from studio managers. The journalists and chiefs known as the Hollywood Ten, who wouldn't uncover their political affiliations, went to prison for disdain of Congress. French's best film of the decade. The Best Years of Our Lives, William Willer, 1946. This story of war and harmony was made in that little window of expectation between the finish of the subsequent world-encompassing war and the beginning of the virus war. It's around three servicemen changing in accordance with regular citizen life in an average American city and is Hollywood glory film production at its best, if maybe less intense than it once appeared. 1950-1959, The Fight with TV. In 1950 the virus war went hot in Korea, who extension on the business expanded, and a self-assertively assembled boycott drove numerous left-wing specialists out of Hollywood to work somewhere else or sell contents economically for others to assume the praise. This air of doubt, dread and weakness, figuratively reflected in High Noon, was exacerbated by the spread of TV, disintegrating the well-known main fans, and by the impact of hostile to syndication enactment that constrained the large studios to strip themselves of their film chains. The business retaliated with greater screens, Cinerama, Cinemascope, VistaVision, and 3D, the last a passing curiosity, and with costly blockbusters, for example, DeMille's The Ten Commandments and cheap quick ones focused on teens. Elvis Presley, thought about a public hazard, was brought to Hollywood, trained, shipped off on military help and invited back as an irreplaceable asset. In the end the film business changed from boycotting TV to eagerly accepting it. French's best film of the decade. High Noon, Fred Zimmerman, 1952. The Western made its mark as a grown-up type in the on-edge post-bellum years, and this pared-down moral story set out to assault McCarthyism in Hollywood and the country everywhere such that cheered dissidents and sneaked by traditionalist obstructions. John Wayne detested it and later showed up in the conservative repost, Rio Bravo. 1960-1969, The European Danger. 
The decade opened on a confident note with Otto Preminger, Exodus, and Stanley Kubrick, Spartacus, both giving the boycotted Dalton Trumbo, a main individual from the Hollywood Ten, his first screen credit since the 1940s. In any case, front office men were all the while behaving irrationally. They would not stand up to the battle in Vietnam that was isolating the country, just superpatriot John Wayne got an opportunity to make his gung-ho the Green Berets, and were confounded notwithstanding unfamiliar rivalry that was more creative, innovative and freed than a Hollywood limped by oversight and drove by veterans, numerous currently hailed as auteurs by compelling French scholars, moving toward the finish of their professions. Consequently in 1966, following the case of their 1920s archetypes, Vigilant Studio heads acquired Extreme Texas legal counselor Jack Valenti, boss consultant to President Lyndon Johnson, to be their new czar. He started re-establishing Hollywood's certainty by supplanting the production code with a more loosened-up arrangement of self-guideline. The decade finished with the unexpected accomplishment of wild kid Dennis Hopper's nonconformist street film, Easy Rider, made for an allowance, procuring a fortune, and incomplete penetrate of the old code. French's best film of the decade. The Manchurian Candidate, John Frankenheimer, 1962. This original intrigue film, set in Washington, D.C., taunted both McCarthyite witch trackers and innocent liberal individual voyages the same. It perceived the developing impact of TV on legislative issues and expected the series of deaths that would come to overwhelm the decade. President John F. Kennedy got it made and permitted John Frankenheimer to utilize the White House in his next film, Seven Days in May, a thrill ride about an endeavored traditional upset. 1970-1979, Hollywood Strikes Back. The achievement of Easy Rider prompted Hopper being given unconditional power to make the garbled the last movie, which demonstrated only that for him when Universal didn't deliver it, notwithstanding a prize at Venice. Be that as it may, Youthful Chiefs, the unshaven supposed film whelps, alumni of film schools and fixated on motion pictures, were given their heads. They comprehended European film and had gained from the Cahiers du Cinema pundit chiefs to regard American experts, for example, Hawks, Hitchcock, Ford, Walsh et al. They ruled the decade after Coppola had united the Hollywood hoodlum custom, Visconti's memorable glory and Roger Corman's abuse style in The Godfather, 1972. Another type of cover conveyance was brought into play to dispatch Steven Spielberg's Jaws, 1975, which, alongside George Lucas' Star Wars, 1977, restored the film-going propensity and began a vogue for untainted embellishments blockbusters. Woody Allen countered by giving more grown-up charge in Annie Hall, over the span of which he unequivocally showed his aversion for the medication-fueled Hollywood world. The decade finished with Hollywood at long last facing the Vietnam experience in The Deer Hunter, Coming Home and Apocalypse Now. French's best film of the decade. The Godfather, Francis Ford Coppola, 1972. Coppola's initial two Godfather films brought Hollywood up to worldwide speed by merging European workmanship house refinement with American classification story and giving Brando his first difficult job in quite a while. Coppola was the predominant producer of his decade, making his own smaller than expected studio, and coordinating the limited scale thrill ride The Conversation, 1974, the initial picture to plug into Watergate distrustfulness, and Apocalypse Now, 1979, the most sweeping of the Vietnam films, both Palme d'Or Choms at Cannes. 1980-1989 The Suits Recover Control. A progression of costly disappointments, among them Scorsese's New York New York, 1977, and Spielberg's 1941, 1979, finished in the 1980 catastrophe of Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate, which pushed United Artists to the edge of total collapse. The film rascals were exceeding themselves, and bookkeepers and other financially capable people handled them. The crazy people were back in their place as passive detainees of the refuge, instead of its supervisors, yet the stars and their representatives were in the ascendant. In 1980 Robert Redford made the Sundance Institute in Utah to empower free film, and it appeared as though US film was creating on equal lines. One was the Hollywood way. Business, traditional, and extremely costly. 
The other, which some idea all the more really American, was the free track, trial, strange, decently planned. A few organizations set out to ride the two. The best was Miramax, made in 1979 by Bob and Harvey Weinstein, the new magnets most like the early pioneers, who delivered and created a portion of the remarkable photos of the 1980s and 90s. Miramax accomplished close significant status subsequent to turning into an autonomous auxiliary of Disney in 1993. Promotion. French's best film of the decade. Seething Bull, Martin Scorsese, 1980. Robert De Niro was the predominant American screen entertainer of the 1970s and 80s. He won an Oscar for Best Supporting Entertainer in 1975 as the youthful Vito Corleone in The Godfather Part II, hence building up himself as the regular replacement to Marlon Brando, who had played the more established Corleone in The Godfather. He won a second Oscar for his complex portrayal of the Italian-American middleweight fighter Jake LaMotta in Raging Bull, the fourth of his nine joint efforts with Scorsese, and it remains his most noteworthy exhibition. The movie was made clearly, something which Chiefs had needed to battle for since the mid-1960s, and it showed the profundity and force that Hollywood movies were as yet prepared to do. It has since been casted a ballot the best American image of the 80s in some of Pundit's surveys. 1990-1999, Animation Makes a Rebound. Paris, where the Lumiere brothers put on the main act of movies projected before a paying crowd in 1895, was the focal point of centennial festivals that pulled in less consideration in the States than the creation in 1994 of DreamWorks SKG, the principal new significant studio for quite a long time. The authors, the eponymous SKG, were Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg from Disney and popular music big shot David Geffen and the organization was to be as much associated with PC games and music similarly as with TV and film. The 1990s saw a progression of significant studios changing hands and the setting up of auxiliaries, e.g. 20th Century's Fox Searchlight, Sony Columbia's Sony Classics, to back or circulate more limited-size autonomous creations, frequently purchased straightforwardly at the Sundance Festival. Enlivened movies made a significant rebound at Disney and at another organization, Pixar, having some expertise in PC activity, which Disney before long procured. Various American blood and gore movies recommended that Satan himself may assume control over the world as the thousand years unfolded. Titanic, the film that might have been an admonition against the hubris going to the misrepresented assumptions for another century, end up being an exaggerated sentimental weepy that quickly turned into the most rewarding picture made up to that date. French's best film of the decade. Raw fiction, Quentin Tarantino, 1994. Tarantino's first film, Reservoir Dogs, was sustained at the Sundance Institute. His second, Pulp Fiction, won the Palme d'Or from a Cannes jury managed by Clint Eastwood and Catherine Deneuve, and resuscitated the hailing vocations of Bruce Willis and John Travolta. This postmodern thrill ride, a knowing mix of craftsmanship house and mainstream society, made him the most persuasive overseer of his age. 2000-2009, a feeling of history repeating itself. No one realized precisely how this decade ought to be articulated or what to think about it. Furthermore, the film head honchos have been driving down Sunset Boulevard, their eyes solidly fixed on the rearview reflect while confronting a smoggy future. Five of the eight major studios that ruled Hollywood's golden age are still there, 20th Century Fox, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Universal, Columbia, under new aggregate administration obviously, and their natural, much-adored logos given elegant makeovers. RKO has dropped off the radar, and MGM and United Artists have just a shadowy presence, however Disney has now a significant standing. Television and recordings keep the previous near us, and changes and continuations proliferate, giving the not altogether erroneous impression that everything has been done and can now just be rehashed. Entertainers and regular The Truth are being moved to the side by PCs, and 3D is back. The magnets talk as much about specialized issue as about genuine movies, and the time between a film's debut in the film and its appearance on the homegrown screen becomes ever more limited. 
It is maybe suitable that Hollywood's century is being set apart by James Cameron's Avatar, the most costly film ever, the most beneficial film ever, constructed in 3D, its story a mixed bag of borrowings from everywhere, and pretty much every edge of it obliged to a multitude of enhancements professionals. It's an image financially reliant on being appeared to an immense worldwide crowd. French's best film of the decade. Banners of Our Fathers, Letters from Iwo Jima, Clint Eastwood, 2006. This reciprocal diptych of insightful movies about the subsequent world-encompassing war is a high mark of a celebrated Hollywood vocation. It presently ranges 55 years, from bit-part entertainer by means of minor TV-led and spaghetti western scent to mechanical mover and shaker as significant star, maker and chief. F. Scott Fitzgerald, who passed on in Hollywood a wore-out case matured 44, said, There are no second demonstrations in American lives. Eastwood demonstrates there could be a five-act dramatization. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to life is often if you haven't already click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.